received a question about Psych 100A, Stats for Psychology. Here's our video response. Hey guys, so I want to talk a little bit about power during the review. So I'll just kind of start. So two options. One is you fail to reject the null, then that's it. There's no power involved. Okay? The other thing is you did reject the null. So you found that the alternative happened to be true. Okay? So if that's the case, so imagine what happened. So the null, for example, was that the average was 100. That was your null. You set up a critical value, you took your sample, right? You found out what, you took the sample, you translated it to some sort of score, right? And again, let's say, let's say right now you're doing a z-test, okay? You translate it to some sort of z-observed score, right? Just to make things concrete, and that thing happened to land here. Remember, if it lands here, with, so you set up your critical values, if it lands within them, that's not freakishly high or low, so you fail to re reject. But, what if you were freakishly high or freakishly low? Then you would reject, right? That's when we start with power. So assume that, for example, it's way too high. So you reject it. So you benchmark there, you reject it. Okay? And just to make this concrete, let's pretend like, not the Z observed, but the actual sample score was 200. Okay? If that's the case, since this was wrong, you have to guess what is the actual average. If the average isn't 100, what's your best bet? All you have to go by is your sample, right? So we'll assume that the sample is really where the average is. Okay. So now this is your new curve. This is not true because this is wrong. This is the truth right over here. Okay? But you didn't know that the picture looked like this, right? So what power means, so power works like this. So if the null is false, so if H0 is not true, right? then power is the probability you're going to notice. So power is the probability, so power equals the probability that you would notice that, okay? Well, so what is you noticing? That you would reject the null. Okay. So, not too bad, right? So, if something's going on and the null is not true, then power is the probability you would actually correctly reject the null. Okay. So let's see that. How would you have done that? When you ran the test, you set up this critical value, right? And if you happened to get a sample that was to the right of this critical value, then you would have made the correct choice to reject, right? But what's the probability of that? If this whole thing represents 100%, then everything to the right of this line represents the probability you do it right. And if you got a sample over here, you wouldn't have rejected, so you've done it wrong, right? Or incorrectly, sorry. So, Let's figure this out. So I guess this percentage is really your power. Okay. Okay. So that's not too bad. Okay. But the thing is, when he gives you these weird problems, so first, the most, this idea about this power thing, right? Do not get confused. When he talks about effect size, he's talking about total difference. He's dividing by the standard deviation. But when you're trying to get probabilities in here, or percentages, right? You're doing the old thing. You're dealing with samples. So the key here is the standard error. That is what's key, okay? And probably he writes it like this, but the standard error is key. And how do you get the standard error? If you remember, that's the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size, okay? So, probably one of his favorite things to do is something like this. What if you had a test, right? You did whatever, you found out the power, let's just make up a number. You found out the power is extremely high. Say the power was 90%. Then his question would be, what would happen if you double the standard deviation of the population. Not the standard error, but the standard deviation of the population. So that would be like times two here, right? Excuse me. And, but at the same time, you quadrupled the sample size. So you would take n and you would quadruple that, right? But look at what's happening. Because this n4 is under the square root, the square root of 4 is really the same as times 2, right? And if you're multiplying the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, what really happens to the overall number? Nothing. So here the power remain unchanged. So if your power started at 90% and you double the standard deviation of the population, but you quadruple the sample size, the power would still be 90%. Okay? I think that's what you'd have to worry about first. That's the most important thing. Okay? Now, let's do some slightly more computational problems. So don't go so, away yet. We just finished part one. Be sure to click on part two.